Hey Corey, I uh, enjoyed both your videos today and I wanted to respond uh, and try to relate some of the ideas that you discussed in each of the videos. Um, the one video was about uh, Bakhtin's moral philosophy and this notion that each of us is a once occurrence individuality that must respond uh, to a, a very particular worldly situation um, in that for each of us as individuals there's really no abstract set of moral principles there's no set of traditional dogmas that could provide us with um, you know knowledge of how to respond to any particular ethical situation because the ethical and moral tasks that are demanded of each of us um, are unique to the extent that we each occupy specific um, uh, specific roles in you know the stage of on the stage of life and no two of us will encounter the same sorts of ethical uh, dilemmas. Um, and uh, it seems that the idea here is that to be a truly ethical person and to uh, to live a good life in you know the Aristotelian way of, of framing that issue um, would require that we first of all you know are or become our own authors that we speak for ourselves and that we um, expect to have no alibi. In other words, there's no pre-existing or um, external explanation for my behavior. I, I have no excuses other than my own um, speech and my own uh, action, which hopefully was successful enough that I needn't uh, give an excuse for failing. Um, to act in a good way. So I think you know this discussion of, of our own individual once occurrence is related to uh, your talk about biology in your other video, Corey, where you, you said that uh, for biology to actually mature as a science, um, it would need to account for the final, uh, the formal and final causes in living organisms, uh, and especially in, in human beings, uh, and you know, I would say the more complex organisms, um, mammals and some birds, um, these creatures seem to be conscious, and humans at least seem to be at least capable of self-consciousness. Uh, and you know, to understand how a certain uh, or certain classes of organisms are capable of consciousness and self-consciousness, we certainly need uh, formal and final causality. But I would say even, you know, to understand how, uh, you know, as Kant put it, a single blade of grass is produced or, um, you know, even how a single bacterium, um, you know, the first anaerobic uh, um, blue-green algae that, that uh, appeared on, on the surface or under the uh, shallow seas of early Earth, that already, the simplest form of life, uh, a free-living cell, is um, a phenomenon which requires formal and, and final causes to fully understand and to grasp it. Um, you know, but the question is, what is a formal cause? What is a final cause? Uh, and the challenge is to give an answer to the, these two questions to the nature of a formal and a final cause that's not, well, supernatural. Um, so, you know, we want to avoid conceiving of a form as something which exists independently of, of any particular material body. We've got to see form and matter, uh, as Aristotle did, as you know, part of the same process, fulfilling uh, a single function. So the form of an organism, its identity, is imminent uh, in its material, though not 
reducible to its material because the material is always changing. Um, every organism is a process of becoming. Um, and what remains the same about the form of the process, even while the matter constantly changes, is what we mean by the form of cause. Um, and see, it's not, you need to have explained matter um, in order to understand form, but in the same way, at least to understand uh, matter as it is actually exhibited in living organisms, you need to understand form. Um, but I think final causes also have to be involved in um, how we account for formal causes and also material. Um, and I, I'm not forgetting about a fish, and I'll get to that, but a final cause is that toward which uh, an organism um, grows toward um, the movement of the organism, the material movement of the organism, which participates in the realization of a particular form, um, is a movement towards um, some ideal. And, you know, if a form is an idea, uh, the final cause is the ideal motivating that idea. And so, you know, my body, the identity of my body, say, it's constantly um, striving to realize itself, uh, always failing to meet that ultimate ideal because, you know, the ultimate ideal would be completion, finished. You know, it, it, it'd make me more like a statue than a living human. Um, but in, in failing to achieve the ultimate ideal, um, it uh, opens up a space of, of the possibility for continual um, formation um, so that I remain alive. And uh, I think for a human being, part of what it means to continually strive to remain alive um, is to con continually strive for the good. And, you know, to say that we each as individuals are responsible for um, taking responsibility for um, our actions. Uh, it's, it's, you know, not that we want to reduce ourselves to our separate physical bodies, um, because certainly the whole point of good action and the good life is that we share it. Uh, and, and that our individual being um, gives to others um, in such a way that we are, you know, somehow benefiting their existence and not just our own. So, you know, we're going to acknowledge that whatever our identity is, it's somehow transcending our physical bodies, um, and that that identity calls us toward the good um, for something that, again, transcends uh, even our identity. So our identity transcends the material process that we are involved with, all other identities with. Um, but the reason for which we strive to realize our identity transcends even our identity. So there's a, there's a, a three-tiered um, hierarchical model here, I guess, that I'm trying to uh, break down here, and it's it's also ranking the the causes, um, the material, the formal, and the final. Now, the efficient, I think, is it's sort of the other side of final causation. Um, you know, I think efficient and, and final causation go together like the past and the future. Um, you know, the past is about repetition and tradition and habit, and the future is about possibility, novelty, um, and all, both of these are always working. Uh, in one sense, they work together, and in another sense, they're at war with one another. But I think the ultimate result is um, new creation, uh, more intense experience, but I'm out of